Hello friends and fellow bibliophiles, welcome to Cat's Novel Adventures. Today I want to share some short stories with you, specifically the short stories I read for Horror Mayhem. <laughs> Horror Mayhem was a month-long readathon held in May and one of the hosts was Mindy of Mindy's Book Journey and I wanted to show her some support for this really fantastic readathon. I read some short stories, but they were all related to zombies in some way. And they all came from Zombies, a compendium of the living dead edited by Otto Penzler. And this was a gift to me from my awesome friend, Kelsey. The first short story is called Eat Me by Robert McCammon. It was originally published in Book of the Dead in 1989. As many of you know, I have talked about Robert McCammon being Kelsey's favorite main guy, like Stephen King is my favorite main guy. And this is actually the first story I have ever read by Robert McCammon. It is about Jim Crisp, who used to be an accountant before he became a zombie in this post-apocalyptic city that he is currently living in. And he is very lonely, very lonely. And he asks the question, when did love die? And one evening he decides to take a walk. While he is walking, he starts hearing some music. It draws him to a place that used to be called the courtyard, but it is now called the boneyard. And we know why, because a lot of the patrons of this restaurant slash bar are no longer human. And some of them are really almost down to their bones, basically. There's a band playing. There's zombies at the bar drinking beer. All the descriptions are wonderful because, you know, you have zombies playing musical instruments. And I think there's one of them that's playing the keyboard and doesn't even have a lower half. So it's only like his top half that is playing the keyboard. While he is there, he ends up noticing a very timid zombie woman who he finds out is Brenda. At first, she says that she has lots of friends, but then Jim wants to get to know her a little bit better, and because it's so loud in this place, he suggests they go take a walk. So they go for a walk, and throughout their conversation, I guess Brenda kind of trusts him and knows he's not going to do anything to harm her, she invites him to come back into her place. They listen to some classical music. They seem to be getting along, and he finds out that Brenda is as lonely as he is. And then she utters the words, Eat me. And that is the only way that zombies can feel pleasure in this dead world, which is kind of icky to me. I gave this story four stars. I think the zombie sex is a bit much and I don't want to go into details of how they go about it. And the ending I thought was kind of silly, kind of over the top, just kind of weird to me in general. However, I will say Robert McCammon did a great job with the descriptions of the post-apocalyptic world, how he described the zombies, what they look like, the atmosphere of the courtyard, and kind of like what Jim is feeling during this really hopeless time. Because it's evident that no one is going to make it out alive, basically, if you are a zombie. Now, there is no mention of living people, so if they are, they're not in this city for sure. The only thing else that I really liked is they can think. They're not like zombies where all they want to do is go out and ravage you and eat you or whatever. That they really do have thoughts and feelings and they're trying to work through them and they're gravitating to places that they find familiar and just want to live their life until the end of their zombie life. 
The second story that I read was called Jumby by Henry S. Whitehead. It was first published in September of 1926 in Weird Tales. It is the first short story or any story that I have read by this author. And it is more like a magic or voodoo Haitian kind of zombie story. It is about a man named Mr. Lee, Mr. Granville Lee from Virginia. He comes back from the war with some ailments because of exposure to mustard gas. His doctor recommends that he spend the winter months somewhere warm and tropical kind of place and he chooses St. Croix. Well, he gets on the island and he starts hearing all kinds of stories about magic and he hears the term jumbie. And so he starts asking some of the local residents and he's getting some conflicted messages. Well, he ends up meeting a Mr. De Silva. They're having a drink and he decides to ask him about the magical elements of the region. And Mr. De Silva decides that he's gonna tell about his own personal experiences that he had particularly one night that has to do with a friend of his that passes away in the middle of the night. So basically the story is about Mr. De Silva's experiences. And I think by the end of the story, Mr. Lee is somewhat satisfied and probably doesn't want to have a similar experience that Mr. De Silva had. I gave it four stars. It's fine storytelling. It was interesting, descriptive, Mr. De Silva's experience, the experience he has with the Jumbi is terrifying, I guess if you would put yourself in that position. However, I am not the biggest fan of Haitian zombies. I just don't prefer them in the whole scheme of zombie land. The third story that I read is called The Outsider by H.P. Lovecraft, which was first published in April of 1926 in Weird Tales. And this is not my first story by H.P. Lovecraft. I read Color Out of Space during the week of Weird and really enjoyed that one. This story is being told by a narrator who is a mysterious, lonely man who lives in an underground castle. It's very dark and dank. And he's been there for a long period of time. He doesn't even really know how he's come about or how his existence started. In fact, there's a line that says, he's conscious of youth because he remembered so little. And really his only point of reference about anything in the outside world are these moldy old books that he can look at pictures because he really doesn't have speech. Or if he does, he's never spoken or even knows what speech would sound like at this point. But he doesn't really seem like he can relate to the pictures that he's looking at. And I think the more that he's reading them, he realizes I have never left this castle and I wanna explore and see what's out there. And so it's like one night, it's a full moon, so guided by that light, he ends up leaving the castle. As he's wandering about, he comes upon another castle, which is total contrast of where he lives. It's brighter, it has light, it's got ivy growing on it instead of like mold. He decides to climb in through a low window where a dinner party is taking place. He makes a very shocking discovery. I gave this story five stars. I really enjoyed it for so many reasons. One, it has those gothic vibes. It reminds me kind of like the atmosphere of Frankenstein. I loved the character of the narrator and his vulnerability, his isolation. I kind of felt sorry for him that he's all alone and doesn't have any self-knowledge that he's just craving to see what else is out there besides what he has currently. I also think the story was well written, wonderful imagery. H.P. Lovecraft is really awesome with his descriptions, but 
really probably one of my favorite stories that I read for this horror mayhem. My fourth short story was Home Delivery by my favorite author, Stephen King. It was originally published in Book of the Dead back in 1989. You can also find it in King's short story collection, Nightmares and Dreamscapes. It is a post-apocalyptic zombie story. We are following the main character, Maddie Pace, who is a very indecisive young woman. She comes from a family with a domineering father who once he dies, shortly after, she ends up marrying a domineering husband. And therefore, she really doesn't have to make a whole lot of decisions because when she gets to the point that she can't decide, her husband decides for her. Well, they end up moving to an island called Jenny Island. He is a lobster man. She becomes pregnant and shortly after, he dies. He has a freak accident on the water and his body is never recovered. So now Maddie has to navigate a post-apocalyptic zombie world because she doesn't have a man helping her and she's pregnant and she's gonna decide what is she gonna do about having this baby and hence the name home delivery because she's basically deciding that's what's gonna end up happening because she's not gonna be able to leave this island and go to the mainland. We find out that this whole zombie apocalypse is happening. It's caused by an alien from out of space. Well, as time goes on, the dead start rising from the small cemetery that they have on the island and they have to deal with it. And then there's a twist to what Maddie has to deal with. So it's almost like she's growing, I guess, and having to rely more on herself than on, on a man. Although it kind of seems like she's almost relying on the people of this island to end up helping her. Anyhow, I gave it four stars. It's really more about the people than it is about the zombies, which is fine. I don't mind that at all. It probably could have been a longer story. We could have fleshed out a little more of the relationships of these characters with Maddie. It would have been kind of nice to see, you know, what happened once she actually delivers the baby. As far as how I feel about Maddie herself, and this is pretty much why I gave it four stars. I really didn't like her as a character. I thought she was kind of meh. I didn't like the fact that she couldn't really function without a man until she's forced to have to do it. To be quite honest, just by the way she has conversations with you know, some of these people, I have a feeling she's gonna end up finding another man that's going to tell her what to do. I did like the whole fact that this island is isolated from the mainland, that these people have more of a fighting chance of living through this apocalypse because eventually the bodies are gonna stop rising from this small cemetery. I mean, you would think. I mean, I guess in theory, zombies could fall in the water and, you know, come ashore. I, I don't know. I mean, I didn't think zombies could swim, but in some universe, I'm sure that they could. Anyway, that is my thought about home delivery. It was fine. The writing was fine. Like I said, it could have been a little bit longer and Maddie could have been a little bit more likable. My last short story for horror mayhem was the facts in the case of M. Valdemar by one of my other favorite authors, Edgar Allan Poe. This was originally published in December of 1845 in the American Review. Now this is a reread for me because I had a summer of Poe a couple of summers ago and this was one of the short stories that I had read and I remembered enjoying it back then and I enjoyed it again this time around. Our narrator, we don't know who he is, is a mesmerist. This is someone who can put a person into a mental state of sleep. And M. Valdemar is 
dying. He's actually dying of tuberculosis, and he and the narrator come up with this plan that when he gets close to death, the narrator is going to put him in this sleep-like trance, and so that's what ends up happening. He comes over, he puts him into this trance. However, there's some supernatural stuff going on because the narrator can communicate still with M. Valdemar, like maybe his spirit or his consciousness or whatever. But for seven months, he's in this state. It gets to the point that M. Valdemar reaches out and really wants to either be brought back or to, you know, he's dead. He knows he's dead. So release me, do something. And so then the narrator has to make a decision at that point. It has some very grotesque moments in it, I will have to say. I gave it five stars. I loved the gothic vibes. I love that it's fear of death and what comes after. I like the fact that uh, the narrator is trying to do some kind of scientific experimentation, which is very um, ironic because when this story was first published, there were many people who believed this was true, that this was an actual scientific experimentation that took place and that this was the documentation detail in it. Because at the time, there was some hysteria around scientific experimentations. There was information out there that animal and human corpses were being reanimated. So when this short story came out, people couldn't tell the difference between if it was fact or fiction. I believe when Edgar Allan Poe had to um, republish it, he had to have some kind of disclaimer that this was a work of fiction. But I loved it. I loved finding that out about it. In fact, I found an article, because I was looking up exactly what a mesmerist is and mesmerism, because it actually is something um, like a form of science, but almost like pseudoscience or like what you would consider like quack science maybe. Anyway, I did find an article, which I will link in the description box. I kind of skimmed the article because it's really long, but I thought I'd share it with you guys. And if you want to check it out, I'll put the link below so that way you can read it. It's called The Extraordinary Case of Poe's Valdemar, How Edgar Allan Poe's Literary Science Became Scientific Lit Literature. And this was by Ava Kaufman. Could not find a date of when this was published but it appears in methodquarterly.com. So I myself am a fan of Edgar Allan Poe's stories because I like the fact that he explores, you know, the death and the macabre, and he's got that narrator most of the time who is unreliable. So you don't really know what's fact, what's fiction. This story actually took place in Harlem in New York and about the time of when this short story was published during that time. I love that there's horror in this situation and what can come of it. Like what is going to be the end result from this experience? Is this narrator going to continue trying to do this mesmerism with other people in the future, considering how long this man, Valdemar, was in this translate state. Um, so I just thought that was pretty interesting. It's, you know, dark, it's got the death element. So I don't know. I don't think you can go wrong with reading anything by Edgar Allan Poe, but of course, like I said, he's one of my favorites. Well, friends, that's a wrap of what I read during Horror Mayhem. I'm really excited about everything that I read, especially the short stories by H.P. Lovecraft and Edgar Allan Poe. Really, really enjoyed them. I also love the fact that not only was I able to read some short stories, which I'm trying to do more of, I was able to keep with my zombie theme, 
for Zombie Thon. Did you participate in Horror Mayhem? If so, what were some of your favorite books or stories that you read for that fabulous readathon? I appreciate you always for stopping by and supporting me. And until our paths cross again, stay amazing and be adventurous.